Hey guys, it's Professor Pro, and as you're all aware, a week ago Nintendo released an Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct, and it was astounding. The Direct featured a ton of amazing developments and details that were incredible to see, and provided the first official information dropped in almost half a year, which is pretty crazy to think about. And even though I still don't believe that keeping quiet about the game for so long was a smart move by Nintendo, I obviously enjoyed the deep dive into island life nonetheless. So what's on the agenda today? There's so much to talk about regarding this game that it was honestly difficult for me to choose where to begin. I was super close to making a video of me gushing about this game for 10 minutes, and if you guys still want to see that after this, I will happily provide it. But there was one thing I knew I had to talk about, and that's how New Horizons convinced me that things I didn't want in the series were actually amazing additions. The first thing I want to discuss is the incredibly innovative terraforming system. Now, full-on town creation was a speculated new feature that I was very open about not liking. I personally thought I put too much power into the player's hands, and even brought this up in my 5 things that would ruin Animal Crossing Switch video from last year. So what changed my mind? How was I won over on something I was so strongly against? Well the answer is rather simple, you actually have to earn the ability to terraform. When I spoke out against town creation, I said it would ruin the immersion of Animal Crossing because of how unfitting it would be. Everything in the Animal Crossing series has to be worked up to, that's the point of the games. Do you want your house to be fully maxed out? Well, you have to get the bells to pay those loans off. You want that rare coelacanth to donate to the museum? You better be prepared for a battle like no other. Do you want your favorite animal in your town? Well, you might have to go through some duds before you get them, which also explains why I don't like the amiibo cards, but that's a topic for another video. The point I'm trying to make is that half of the fun of Animal Crossing is earning your achievements. So when I heard people suggesting that we should just be able to create our perfect paradise from the moment we turn the game on, yeah, I wasn't for it. But the New Horizons Direct makes it clear that you only unlock the terraforming permits after your island has been majorly developed. And this completely changes how I see the concept of town editing and creating. It's no longer an unearned ability, but an accomplishment. Your reward for pushing through and designing your island around its layout is the ability to make it the town of your dreams in any way you want. And I absolutely adore this. Not only does the ability to terraform seem super rewarding, but it'll also allow for some insanely creative town layouts. Yes, some of them could end up looking a little artificial, but I think that's the point. Nintendo is giving the players complete control in this area, and I love that. You'll never hear me say no to creativity, unless said creativity would ruin the experience of the game. The next thing I want to talk about is the fact that holidays aren't going to be in the base game, but will instead be released through updates. This was pretty strange news to hear, and because I didn't really understand it, I initially reacted negatively. I thought it was silly that we would have to wait for free updates to get the complete package, since I don't really think that works well in games unless it's a community-based shooter like Splatoon for example. I originally thought that Nintendo just didn't have enough time to finish the holidays even after the delay, but I quickly saw the genius behind this decision. By restricting holidays to free updates, Nintendo can control the amount of content released into New Horizons. I know it sounds like I'm just stating the obvious, but think about it. It's likely that certain items, furniture sets, or even abilities will be restricted to certain holidays. It would kind of ruin the experience if someone time traveled or hacked the game to receive those things early, and then start giving them out to everyone. Now, let me just say that I don't have a problem with time traveling. I don't personally understand the appeal of it, and probably never will, unless your schedule causes you to miss certain things in Animal Crossing, but if you do time travel, I'm not calling you out or trying to shame you in any way. But you have to admit that going onto Twitter and seeing dozens of pictures featuring Jingle and Toy Day in the middle of August would be a little annoying. I know I certainly wouldn't want something like that to happen. Moving on, we can't forget to talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons' biggest new feature, crafting. Now, I was actually for this right after I saw the Trias presentation at E3, but I haven't really talked about the addition yet on my channel, so I'll do it here. Crafting was something I didn't really want in mainline Animal Crossing. It was in Pocket Camp, and I didn't hate it there, but I heavily disliked the game and that probably soured the feature for me. But as soon as I saw it in New Horizons, I knew it was going to be a great addition. I'm certain that after New Horizons has been out for a while, we'll look back on past Animal Crossing games and think, how did we get by without this? It feels like such a natural evolution of the Animal Crossing formula, and I'm almost surprised it wasn't done sooner. Like I've said before, Animal Crossing's most important element is the feeling of progression, starting from nothing and evolving your town into your paradise. And with crafting, it truly feels like that evolution is in your own hands. 
I mean, sure, it felt good to find certain furniture items in older titles, and building up your town through public works projects was great in New Leaf, but allowing us to craft furniture ourselves and place it outside allows for A, tons of creativity, B, a town that will look like no other, and C, way more replayability. I mean, Animal Crossing games can already last for years, but in addition to fish, bugs, fossils, paintings, and other collectibles, we now have DIY recipes that we can aim to gather. Crafting adds so much more to this game, and I could not be happier that it's included. The final thing I want to talk about is the game's soundtrack. I see the New Leaf soundtrack get hated on a lot, which is really unfortunate. I've seen people call it bland, uninspired, uninteresting, and even downright bad. I never understood this because New Leaf has my favorite soundtrack in the series. Yes, the music is softer than the other Animal Crossing games, and could be considered blander, I suppose, but that's what I like about it. New Leaf soundtrack, especially the night tracks, allowed me to immerse myself in the world. The music was extremely calming, and I felt that worked amazingly for a game like Animal Crossing. So naturally, I was hoping for New Horizons to follow in New Leaf's example and give us some slower, more relaxing tracks. And it absolutely did not do that. The music in New Horizons is very original, but if anything, is most reminiscent of population growing style. But against all odds, I actually really love the tracks we've heard. Don't get me wrong, I've never hated the soundtrack of any Animal Crossing game, but Population Growing has my least favorite. My only hope is that New Horizons night music can hold a candle to New Leafs, since I believe it to be unmatched in the level of amazing night songs. I mean, the only one I dislike is 5am, and that barely counts as a nighttime track. But anyways, that's about it for features I didn't think I wanted in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is there anything that you thought you didn't want in New Horizons but were convinced otherwise? Let me know in the comments below. Professor Pro, out.